Vintage reissue watches have become an ever-growing genre. They are by no means new. We saw reissues of vintage pieces begin to take hold during the 80s and the 90s, but the numbers of these pieces is ever-increasing. We can assume that the reason why they have become so popular is because of our demand, because of the sheer interest we all have in the vintage space and vintage watch marketplace. The answer is multi-layered, and actually, when we think about it more, the designs of these pieces may be more important than most other factors. Social media has helped push our attention towards vintage watches, but further than that, and what is more interesting, actually, disregarding price, collectability, etc., is that we can gather so much more information about them nowadays. There are pages upon pages of articles written, and discussions that revolve solely around these objects. More than the hype or the inherent value that they offer, we can learn about all the small details that made these watches special, their traits, purposes, what made them so important. Now some reissues are greater than others. Some are one-to-one -one accurate representations of their counterparts. Some companies go to such extents to use CT scanners to physically map every detail, adding their own touches like milled out clasps and modern movements. Most of us would be aware of Omega and what their creative department is capable of. Some take inspiration from past pieces and hybridize them in with their modern range, possibly using the same name but creating a looser interpretation of the original piece, using elements from different models, maybe aesthetics like rivet bracelets or gilt dials, and others manage to look at this category differently. Instead of recreating the pieces from scratch, they modernize them, possibly scaling them up, keeping the proportions similar, but still capturing that charm of the past in an entirely new watch. That leads us to the Longines Heritage Classic. Now yes, there are many more pieces in the Heritage Collection, like the Big Eye, the Heritage Diver, the Heritage Military. They will all get their own separate videos in the future. And with all of these watches, Longines does a terrific job with their details, the use of different dials, callbacks, but the Heritage Classic is a watch that received a lot of attention at the close of 2019 when it was unveiled, and there are plenty of reasons why. It is a reference that pays tribute to aviation pieces of the late 1930s and early 40s. Interestingly, Longines and Omega shared many dials at the time, and even before this piece was announced, I had the privilege of handling a 1938 Omega that looked eerily similar. What is quite striking is that the original Longines reference that the New Heritage Classic is based on measured to be somewhere in the realms of 33 millimeters, where the original Omega measured to be 38. Imagine wearing a 38 millimeter watch in the late 1930s. People must have thought you were out of your mind. But pilot watches were large for legibility's sake. So the notable change to the New Heritage Classic is that it has been scaled appropriately, measuring 39 millimeters a very contemporary size. You can consider that an advantage or a disadvantage. That will be explained later. And what is so terrific is that the proportions have been handled excellently. The scaling on the dial is correct relative to the original. Adding to that, the use of space is clear and accurate. The watch takes a 19mm strap or bracelet, and this sweep from 39mm down to the 19mm lug width is very organic and unseen nowadays for the most part. Notice the taper from the case to the lugs. It's quite a unique element, keeping to that vintage-inspired feel. The choice of crown is actually scaled correctly, with a thin profile that matches the styling used with hand-wound pilot watches of the time. Let us now try to unpack what makes the Heritage Classic just great. First Impressions tells us that it is a simple watch. It looks fairly unadorned, with a basic time-only complication and added subdial. We would call this a dress watch nowadays, but hidden beneath the simplicity of those first impressions, you start to see many small details. It is a sector dial watch. How many of those do we see? We could probably count the modern incarnations on one hand. How many do we see with an aesthetic that follows this styling? None. The primary watch we see often used as a reference is the JLC Master Control Sector. You will find a link to the video in the corner of the screen now. But even the most basic model, which is much more technologically competent, there is no arguing when dealing with JLC, the use of the numerals that follow the radius of the dial, it appears very dynamic, and even though they aren't all in line and easy to read like we would expect to see, they manage to visually make sense. One of the complaints is how the sub-seconds dial cuts off the sixth numeral at the base of the dial, 
but you will see a modification to this watch face at the end of the video and you can make up your mind. Another detail that has been addressed extremely well is the sheer use of space on the dial. Even though there seems to be a lot of negative space, lack of text, the central white portion of the dial and its openness allows for the fine needle hands to work their way around the sector. Adding to that, the use of colors split between the cream white portions on the outer border of the dial in a section, subdial. How the white cuts into the brushed silvery surface of the sector ring at the six. How black contrasts against these colors on the batons, numerals, and minute track. And the use of heat bluing on the steel hands that ties it all together. Masterful. Then we move our attention to the use of lines. Every element on the dial has a line affiliated to it. So the minute track, how it does not disconnect from the five minute markers, and this rail dial effect follows. The central division pole router lines that run through the four quarters, creating a fantastic symmetry between the individual elements, and more importantly, improves the relationship between the hands and the batons. And the detailed subdial that has this almost guilloché finish, and an extremely defined track where you could essentially read the running seconds at a glance. Now you can maybe see just how well managed these details are and how coherent it all feels. Coherence, a word that you seldom think about with watch design. There is no point hiding it any longer. The Heritage Classic is one of the most beautiful sector dials ever made. In the modern lineup, you will struggle to find anything as clear, precise, and coherent as this piece. Now, does this particular model deserve all the credit? Remember, this style is not new or groundbreaking. It is paying tribute to a past reference. But if we look at the original models from the time, you will see that actually, the way this piece has been handled shows a great level of care and attention to detail. The choice of using sharp, what we would call pencil-styled hands, really improves the overall aesthetic of the piece. It provides so much more visual symmetry not so much that you lose the hands amongst the details, but just enough that allows the hands to be read, but also looked past, since they do not offer much visual weight. There is a lot to take in with this model, which is partially why it makes for such an interesting watch, not only because it is so unique when compared to most vintage reissue or vintage inspired pieces, but it has a great X factor. What really has come to mind as this write-up was being put together is that it is such a character. It seems to be a watch that oozes style, function, a bit of classical whimsy. It reminds you why vintage watches are so cool. Not their prices, not the patina or the age they show on their dials, but also just how inspired their designs were, wholly original and unique, given to pilots as a functional instrument, and even now, its design makes a big statement. So is everything about it perfect? No watch is truly perfect. The correctly scaled up proportions makes the watch look visually correct, but with the added diameter, the lugs seem to overreach slightly. This is not uncommon to see on pilot's watches, but as a watch built to be worn casually every day, it may affect those with slimmer wrists. And then the question about the use of the six numeral that is overlapped on the dial. In these changed examples, first I made the subdial even larger to occupy the space which would make the reading experience easier. This is closer to the model that was used as the inspiration behind the piece. What it does is divide the sector dial, which is clearly what the team behind the new model wanted to avoid. And to the next rendition, scaling down the subdial allows for the six to match the rest of the numerals, but the cost is losing the dial's legibility. So this idea of giving an impression of the six numeral shows that there is symmetry to the dial, while allowing for the sector ring to remain unbroken, and the size of the subdial to have enough presence that it is legible at a glance. I like to think of this piece as the Longines Calatrava, an elegant, initially simple, but actually a visually complicated piece, taking on the vintage sector dial with a fresh, modern approach by reintroducing elements that we barely ever see. This is exactly the kind of watch I would expect a designer to wear and that is very impressive. Coherence, excellent use of contrasting colors and materials. One that is by far the most attractive Longines piece that we have been shown in recent years, and a real character that continues to remain inviting the longer you stare at it.